I will introduce Franz again uh, quickly so he can get on with his uh, presentation. Uh, many of us know him, but again, he is a Dutch American sustainability sociologist uh, with a PhD in the sociology of international development. And he has a Master of International Affairs from Columbia University. Um, he has experience at the UN um, and wrote a wonderful book uh, in 2012. It's called The Tierra Solution, Resolving Climate Change Through Monetary Transformation. And it's, it's a wonderful mix of uh, uh, practical insights on how the international uh, system um, operates, also how the international law system and the UN system uh, uh, operates. And then, of course, that's mixed with, 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 with good insights into the banking uh, uh, system. And we got Stephen holding up the book. Uh, I, I can very much recommend it. Um, he's working on a update of it or a new version, which initially was named Ample Money, but he might change the, uh, uh, the title still again. And I will later put in uh, the chat also his, his uh, website uh, URL, where he has a lot of new um, insights and ideas uh, that he wants to share. Uh, Frans, uh, goedenavond, goedemorgen. It's good to see you again. Um, let, let, let's, let's hear you about, uh, uh, you know, the CBDC and the international uh, uh, aspect of that. And then whatever you have, uh, uh, of course, your own solutions um, for the problems we, we have. Welcome, go ahead. Thank you, Govert. Uh, <clears throat> Let me uh, bring up uh, in a minute the PowerPoint. But before we do this, I think most of us are still thinking about Sam's presentation because it was really the way for citizens' monetary organizations to engage in this kind of research that questions and um, the, the, the analysis of the establishment, very, the bargaining to them, but then also not only denouncing them, what is happening, but also an announcing and I think that is the work, in my opinion, of a, uh, sorry, that, <laughs> that's coming in a minute. Uh, and announcing, so it's announcing and, and denouncing and announcing. And so what Sam is doing, and also what our friend in Kenya is doing, and also what um, the professor Rotek um, is doing, these are really innovative kinds of approaches. And that is really what we are after. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I take the CBDCs as a kind of case study of where we have to go. And many of those questions that were raised the, uh, during this weekend, so most of them I think can be placed into the framework that I have developed. And particularly also when Eric asked a minute ago, what to Sam, what is the best solution? I think the best sol part of the best, best solution is to have a framework that, why, that we want to present to the nations and demand. And as citizens, we can demand. Just, just in a justified way, we can demand justice and we can demand a transformational 
Bretton Woods number three, because the times are pregnant with enormous dangers, but also with enormous opportunities. And so the basic idea of the, ba the, of the TRIMS framework is a development of the Tierra solution in 2012, where the basic idea is that a, real, that a major way of resolving the climate crisis is through the monetary system. And if I look, if I think what Sam was saying, how the monetary system can be really has to be analyzed in about a dozen ways with the input in, into, the, into a system and also the, out, the inflows and the outflows, then we really have something really to offer and we have to push for governments to, li to listen and, and for people to be educated. So let me quickly start. And <clears throat> so I really said road to nowhere, the CBDCs. And of course, that's a little bit one really has to understand when I say road to nowhere and I talk about CBDCs, then we have to talk about effective CBDCs. And in my opinion, and I'm going to argue this, that is impossible to have a real, um, sustainable, just uh, digital currency in, in nations without the framework that I'm going to present. And the way I want to make the argument, and I'm not a lawyer like Hotty, but I'm a, a sociologist of, interna of international development. And so what I'm going to uh, argue, no effective CB CBDCs without the use of a TRIMS-like monetary sustainability framework. So I say dreams like, and I've looked around and I've really not found something like this. It is rather unique. One of the uh, first people who I asked to uh, review my 2012 book, The Tierra Solution, was Ben McKibben given that the future is a question of politics and reason, uh, then he, in that kind of battle, he thinks that my argument of monetary transformation to resolve the uh, climate uh, chaos is an important, is really important. And so, um, though there are several people who were able to support it, but for the most people, the book has really not uh, been selling that. It was not the idea anyway. Oh, yeah, I ought not to say this. Of course, you want a book to be read and sold. But that was not a main uh, way of writing it. My purpose of writing the book and also engage and being engaged in this monetary transformation is basically I felt a great responsibility when uh, the financial crisis happened in 07 and particularly 08. And I had um, one or two years before retired from teaching of different ways different levels. And I asked myself, what do I, privileged individual with 24 years of formal education, 
uh, living in three la- cultures, Europe, Ghana, West Africa, and the US. What do I have to say? What, what is my answer? And so that is the way I set, set, set out. And after four years, I was able to give the answer. And that was the book. Now, 10 years later, quite a few things have happened. And so now I've come to the conclusion, the answer is still for the, in terms of the climate emergency is still the same. I th- still think the monetary uh, monetary uh, transformation is still one of the major solutions. And, but we have to go further in terms of the analysis. And I came out at the end, it is the world economy. The economy in its, with its four subsystems has to be not only reformed, but transformed. Transform means a new form. Reform is the old uh, form with some cha- with changes, little or a little bit more substantial, whatever. But transformation is really an overhaul. It's a new thing. And I think that is what is needed. And so we will talk about that a bit later on. So effective CBDCs, you really need a good monetary sustainability framework. And the essential components of that framework, and you see TRIM stands for the Tierra solution, being, being the ground level for this transformed international monetary systems is a dual theoretical underpinning of sovereign money like Joseph and also earth science and governance during the Anthropocene. And I really have to emphasize this. If we in the, in the monetary reform and transformation movement are not engaged in real serious uh, research, then we are not, then we are missing the boat. So the theoretical underpinning of what I'm doing is in terms of the monetary system, uh, basically the sovereign money, of course. And, but also we have to start thinking what human beings already have done uh, in the last, since the Industrial Revolution, of being, being a geological force, like, like ice ages. Number two, the structural components. So the mon- the, the, that framework or the, and the Tierra monetary system based upon a monetary standard of specific tonnage of CO2 per person. And I made a comment about this in one of the se- uh, uh, sessions. But the most visible part is the UN People's Bank which is basically based upon uh, Omarova's work with the Federal Reserve. And so I translated this onto the international level to the best I could, and you will hear some uh, towards the end. So if we talk about CBDCs, the first thing is what that I say is have a framework. Second, the second thing, is we have to have a system, systemic approach to the um, to approaching CBDCs, and that is one. But the other one is um, we have to have a uh, in the, even though the, mon- the international monetary system is very uh, unjust and segmented 
and disjointed and unsustainable, it's there. So we really have to start thinking that is the, the system that we have to think of. And so... Oh, so very quickly, uh, I'm concerned. Are you thinking you're sharing a screen or are you just reading from your own screen or did you want to share the no, screen so or I just go on? Some introductory remarks and then I go through the, the screen. There are only a dozen uh, 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 screens. So let's see okay, what so the time is. Yeah, the time is really going. I have to hurry up. Uh, okay. Introduction and the argument. Well, why does it? So that was the, the argument, and I stopped at the, uh, number three. This is very important. You can have beautiful structures, but you really also, and you also have a good uh, process. So I developed a whole process for that, the Global uh, 32 Initiative. And maybe we'll come to that, but otherwise you can read it in, in the next book. Uh, so my point of departure is a six, six statement. The monetary, financial, fiscal, and commercial subsystems of the world economy operate and suffer from the specific and joined escalating injustices. So when I say joint, we have to think system and subsystems and so therefore um, we start with the the second one is the monetary system prim, being primus inter pares and therefore um, we feel that this statement that particularly is also in Huber of course is very important Then we have to look at the justice system, because not only in terms of concepts, but also in terms of strategy. And we have to consider uh, monetary justice in the broad sense of a transitional justice, which includes both monetary, um, financial, fiscal, and the trading and injustices. So, I already talked about the dual uh, theoretical underpinning and the central component of the US bank, I also mentioned this, which in turn transforms the UN system itself into a transformational Bretton Woods tree that replaces the reformist Bretton Woods two and of the IMF. They are talking about, they don't talk about transformation, they talk about reform. And we as a voluntary citizens organization, we have to talk about transformation. I had quite a discussion with with uh, Lucille in a little while, not, not today, a year or so ago, uh, to make it clear that <clears throat> the way <clears throat> the NEAT Act and, uh, is also transformational on, in the financial system, but internationally, in my opinion, It's not transformational because internationally, the real reform is a transformation not only of the money system, but also of the fiscal system and of the trading system. So all of that is to be integrated into a transformational justice system, which is called the transitional Uh, justice system. So be, then finally, at the end, 
after having made those points, I can say digital currencies are good ones and effective ones if they are able to be part of a just, sustainable, and therefore stable international monetary system. And so presently, in my opinion, the best proposal for a digital uh, system, uh, currency, sorry, is the Tierra. Because it's explicitly part of a whole tra transformation of uh, the present monetary system. So as a monetary system, in the strict sense, we know that monetary system in the broad sense. Um, that is strange. Just, Okay, so you can apply this to the local level, but I think it is at least that might be useful, but internationally it's very important for major changes because you ought to have a kind of just um, sustainability justice. Sustainability justice means justice in all three areas, social, economic, and and, and uh, ecological, so and so there are about uh, probably a couple of millions of groups in, in, engaged in in uh, in one, one of the social or economic or or uh, ecological uh, groups, but it's also important to think in terms of um, uh, transitional justice. Am I? Okay. Um, so we are talking about the framework. What, what, um, uh, <clears throat> what is needed at the end is that the framework is being accepted. And that is basically what happened in '92 at the uh, U at the UN Earth Summit, and um, they come up. They didn't give all the answers, but they came up with a good framework, and that was the Framework Convention upon which uh, COP28 is being based, like the other 27. And in terms of uh, <clears throat> um, the interest of justice. I I was there in '92 in Rio for the whole convention, both as a journalist because I've been producing a, a TV program at in in Queens in New York City for about ten years, and I had to pass to be. Also, as a journalist, I could go anywhere. And I also was representing a church, a big church, Riverside Church. And so I could go anywhere. And so at the end, I was able to ask the question to the Secretary General, Maurice Strong, of his opinion about the following question. In your opinion, is gross disparity in inside nations and this gross disparity between nations. Is it A or D major cause of ecological degradation? He spent seven minutes in trying to frame his answer on this. In the middle of 2000, journalists who were exposed to this kind of question. And that is basically the social justice at the level where it really matters. So uh, I already mentioned several times about reform. 
So Bretton Woods, that was really a major, uh, that was a trans transformational event. It really was forced to bring up a solution. And if people really had, if those 22 nations had agreed to follow Keynes, we would have had another world. But what happened was that the, the, basically the main victor nature, na nation was able to set the rules. And so we got the gold, the gold ex and dollar exchange standard. And that disappeared when on August 17 in 1971, when the US simply decided, no, 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 we are not going to do that anymore because it was too much of the gold disappearing. So what happens now, 70 years later, the IMF and the World Bank and many and several, most of the UN organizations are to talking about reform. Some organizations at the UN, particularly the UN Conference for Trade and Development, UNCTAD, they are the real, in my opinion, thinking uh, parts in the UN. So what, what I'm supposing is proposing then is this transformational Bretton Woods uh, three. And that is basically the, in the, uh, the new uh, website, transformmoney.org. That is where it is explained in about a dozen kind of registers. Uh, so I think we, we skipped. So the framework, Uh, one of the most interesting things, which was also in 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 in, in the 2012 book, is the, the the need for a dual balance of payments. And this can be done by every nation if they want to do by using their running account in their balance of payments by adding the ecological side of uh, in the balance of payments. So you would have a financial balance of payments and you would have an ecological balance of payments. And of course, everybody, the, the high uh, polluting CO2 two emission countries and the low ones. The, so it's very th that the process is is good in order for uh, for major changes to take place. And when we are talking about monetary education, like we heard several times and in, in in several kind of uh, presentations, then also on the internet we can start by looking at each of the four subsystems of the world economy and have people discuss and decide the four most important reform measures, but also the most important policy measures and particularly policy measures on the international level. And so you get basically the whole process of uh, 32 measures or policies. So the, la no, the last, oh yeah, that is the process part. It go, it doesn't, you see, it jumps too much. So, <clears throat> This is the way forward. Have national groups of the MMR convinced that their governments to support the UN Commission on Monetary Reform and Transformation, which would be followed by a UN Transformation Convention, which would basically redesign the UN 
this is what happened in 44. And it all, so I hope that it will be possible to have it happen. Uh, but now, given uh, the uh, comments of Joseph uh, yesterday uh, about this commission, he said, yeah, now everybody starts uh, 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 trying to be listed the top part for their currency. So I think we, I think I'm, I'm renaming this kind of commission as the UN Commission on Transformational Bretton Woods Three. So people have really to start thinking in that in that large terms, not a reform, but like Bretton Woods say we are in a, and they have said this in the in the UN we are in a new Bretton Woods. Uh, situation. But what they say then, they come up with very kind of small bore uh, measures and policies. And what's really needed is transformation. The transitional justice campaign is uh, the one that can be uh, used to bring this transformational Bretton Woods tree to make this a reality by having nations and particularly organ uh, voluntary organizations start pushing it, for, start pushing for uh, this uh, this approach. Yeah, so I have not spoken much about the framework itself, but so basically it's four parts. You will sign to if you can't penny, justice asymmetrically in terms of a global monetary justice campaign. And then a democratic process of global 2032 initiative, which I explained a minute ago. And then the monetary architecture. So the monetary architecture of a Tierra uh, monetary uh, system would consist of a the standard, monetary standard decarbonization, the digital currency, of course, the very visible UN People's Bank, and then the dual payments uh, accounting system for financial and climate credits and debits. So in conclusion, CMOs are to think about CBDCs system systemically and internationally. So international system structural and strategical approach to CBDCs. And then CBDCs are not, CMOs are not to be bashful to advocate or rather push for monetary justice or rather transitional justice at UN at another international economic gatherings as the fundamental organizing value of the TRIMS monetary sustainability framework, counteracting the escalating uh, injustices in the monetary and financial, fiscal and commercial systems of the world. And so I'm working with the Uni Unitarian Universalist Association and, and my local church in Chapel Hill to have a, a, a uh, 2025 statement of just of statement of conscience on the escalating monetary, financial, fiscal, and trading injustices and the mounting monetary suppression, oppression the mounting 
And the more I've listened uh, this uh, th this weekend, the more I'm convinced how important it is for us to really indicate how bad things are and how unjust. And so, and that is not only now, but it is mounting. If you think about all the debt uh, crises and mounting debts, particularly also of the developing world in the global south, then the whole notion of the mounting is a real concept for us to work with, because that is what we have to work on. What's happening now? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that that, uh, um, and so what we are doing uh, in terms also of uh, I said at the very end, see COP twenty eight statements of or flyer of the AME side. That is exactly what uh, what is planned to happen after this. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen and friends, I'm so sorry that we that we lost time by my inefficient uh, presentation in the beginning. But but thank you for your attention and any questions and the and reactions to the website of transform uh, transform money. Uh, are most welcome. Thank you. Stop sharing. Can I can I have a question to Mr. Prunch? Hello. What about can, can I ask question to Mr. Prunch? Go, go go ahead. I don't see over right now, and I'll be the moderator temporarily. Go. What's your question, Eric? Um. Of course, I I, I, I thanks, Mr. Prance. I find your presentation very intriguing, but I don't seem to be in accord. Nevertheless, um, you you mentioned uh, about the climate emergency and CBDC. Uh, what do you think is the direct or indirect connection? Uh, I understand that CBDC that I'm reading now uh, have uh, has uh, pros and cons. And also you talk about the IMF, World Bank, UN reforms, transformation of bread and wood tree. And uh, they are probably being discussed at the World Economic Forum. And it seems they are not at all real monetary reforms. And I I'm afraid if there is any, it's going to be for the interest of the rich nations. Uh, hopefully, I wish to read your book. If you can send me a copy for perusal. And uh, when it comes to CBDC issues you talk about, I'm neutral about it here in the Philippines. It must be optional or by choice, but not mandatory. Uh, the Philippines, for you all you know, has withdrawn its participation to CBDC. While it seems it is going to be a kind of global experimentation in so far as currencies are concerned in the new technological world, while it is still contemporaneously very dilemmatic proposal all over 130 countries on this planet. Uh, please explain the correlation between climate emergency and the CBDC. Thank you, sir. So if we want to... Um have a digital currency or if a country wants a digital currency my point is they really have to look not only in their own uh, nation they have to look at the system and the system uh, is the monetary system of which the digital currency is part is segmented disjointed, unjust, etc. And so in order to be effective with their currencies, digital currency, 
they really have to have a, a, a better overall international system. And that is basically what I'm proposing with the uh, in, in this particular framework, in the TRIMS framework. Tierra, uh, uh, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> The, the Tierra transformed international monetary system. So that is where the discussion ought to go. We ought to push them to start thinking in that. But of course, we also know the, the other part, the establishment world, the World Economic Forum and everyone else basically almost is not thinking in those terms. And that is exactly what we in the voluntary sector can do. Don't forget, I, one of my teachers at Columbia was Margaret Mead. And one of her statement was, social change doesn't come from government. It comes from committed and concerned citizens. That is the only way that major changes has taken place. So if we want to have a major change in terms of a monetary system, a global monetary system, is to have each nation push for a just, sustainable, and stable internet monetary system. And if I think what Hoggett was talking about uh, this weekend and also uh, Hudson, then I see that we have an enormous thinking uh, potential and acting potential. The only th how can we translate this into a real force? And when I was listening to To, to to our friend in Kenya, I started thinking, how can a group like the Unitarian Universalists, who have a thousand uh, uh, communities in the nation, how can they be organized in, in this new grassroots economic uh, organization that can make decisions in an effective way? And I'm thinking also of our own group, of the AMI, how can we really get far more efficient and effective by being organized in that way? I hope I answered your question, Eric. Thank you, sir. Please send me your book. I will peruse it, possible, to the Philippines. And I will send it the copy also to the uh, leaders of our country. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Fernanda, please go ahead. That was a really great presentation, Franz. Uh, I'm sorry you had technical difficulties, but we really enjoyed it. Um, I also want to thank you for your very uh, thorough analysis on the next steps and your vision forward and how well you integrate the climate action into the monetary reform. Uh, also, it's really great that you're working with Unitarian Universalists. I, uh, I'm also trying to get involved in my local group and uh, heard a recent presentation there. Uh, they talked about like a uh, random selection for governance. That might be a thing we consider, um, but that's a tangent. <laughs> um, I also kind of have a question uh, just to jump back. I'd love to read your book um, and to have more time to look through your website and um, maybe animate some of the great things you have there so that more people can see them. Uh, one of the things I want to launch is uh, the phrase of the just just money for the just transition. Um, there is a lot of use of the word just transition already in the climate movement. So I think there, there's a good niche for us to fill there uh, with our use of just money. Um, so yeah, I kind of just look, hope, look forward to working with you. And uh, I do have a little follow-up question just for for Eric as well. I'm, I'm wondering if you're um, dislike of Franz's presentation is more to do with the international currency issue. I'm I'm just concerned, <laughs> confused, and a 
about that that oh, I, little I, bit. I think, I'll let France address it first. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, what uh, Steve was uh, talking in respect to, to uh, macro and, my, and, and, and macro, uh, the talking to Lucille, that is so important. And I really want to emphasize, though I look at the international level, I am very much, uh, oh, I learned so much more about the, the local level. I, Uh, in terms of monetary. And of course, uh, that is very important. But my my passion, I would say, is transforming this unjust and unsustainable and therefore unstable. The stability of the monetary system is so clear. And if you see what what uh, Sam was talking about a couple of minutes ago, um, we have answers, or we are on the road to have really good answers. And so we have to, in one way or another, really push our international IMMR to do their job, because it's there where the decisions are being made. Think about the climate week in New York. I was in New York for 45 years and very much involved in all of these things, including the occupation and all of that. And um, we have to be there, not only at the climate, but also at the trade, you know, Trade is really an area that is hardly dealt with in the, mon in, in, the, in the monetary reform movement. And so the, the larger, the macro and the micro, they basically are playing together in different ways. My final comment uh, to you, Fernanda, uh, is when I see Sunrise and the other youngsters' movements, I really appreciate what they are doing. Extinction, also another, so many others. And I would like them to look at this, uh, the, the new website of Transform Money. Because okay. that is where the rubber hits the road. I will share that with my allies and, and the local spheres, definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I went to a local Sunrise uh, launch or relaunch rally yesterday that uh, rallied uh, 140 people. I was really impressed um, with our numbers here. And we did... Uh, come to the conclusion that we need to build people power and uh, organize people and organized money. So um, I'm hoping that maybe one of y'all can join me here in Texas and we can spread the knowledge on just money so that the movement can really take launch. And it's really an advantage here on the border setting because we have this uh, coll collision of both of these currencies and exchange systems here on the border. So really an advantageous place to launch these ideas. So, so happy to be part of this group and bring the knowledge. So much of our local issues and problems have always to include an international dimension. It ought not to be the most important one in a, in, in a town or in a city or in a state, but it has to be included and there are people of course, who completely focuses on this, but uh, that doesn't mean that the local, uh, the micro act activities are less important. Both of them are important. Let's I see there are quite a few people who are waiting, so. Let's go on and let's, get Eric to respond to Fernanda, and then we'll go a few more minutes. We want to get 
Let's give it about eight, nine more minutes. We want to get to the COP28 statement too. Um, um, Fernando- Also you, happy to hear from Howard, Nick. Y'all want to join him. <laughs> but um, Fernando or Eric, you remember Fernando was worried about your thoughts about France and France and where you are coming from. And it might be a different emphasis or a different uh, a different concern. Can you share where you, what your thinking is, Eric? Uh, well, um, it, you know, I, I, I am really uh, having misgivings to Mr. Pranz. But if that is good proposal from Mr. Pranz, then I guess we can probably persuade Let's say uh, there are 36 million billionaires, 2,400 billionaires globally to support this transformational proposal for social, economic, monetary justice, or ecological justice for sustainable survival of humanity. But, but Mr. Franz also talked about trade problems uh, that has not been discussed in monetary reform. For example, I heard and I have read in the past that, uh, for example, the United States of America is uh, hugely indebted with China of hundred billion of dollars. That's uh, now it's even up to two point twenty four trillion dollars, and the government of America has been on default on many occasions. Uh, although uh, I heard it's been offset by fluctuating trade deficits between two nations, uh, amounting five hundred billion dollars of American investment in China that reached fifty billion dollars. So. The problem is this. Um, I, I don't understand what kind of monetary reform what Mr. Pranz is talking about, uh, particularly where we're dealing with the BRICS nations uh, and also with the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank in China, in the Southeast Asia. So how can we do this kind of, how can we integrate this kind of a proposal to uh, of Mr. Pranch uh, to be proposed to the UN, to the IMF, to the World Bank, and even to the World Economic Forum. This is a very difficult one. What I understand is that uh, in a simple term, what we need is international monetary reform that uh, all nations will be given a sovereignty to create its own money debt free. And then we can address all ecological, environmental, economic, social, political problems in each country. But Eric, rather than that kind of yes, thank you. But but that will not happen unless people have a way to look and have a, a, a kind of framework in which they can go forward. And that is basically what I'm trying to do: create a framework by which the uh, people can plan the, the, the next step or the next phase, etc. And so, for instance, I have never, I have not included into the framework the whole issue of the uh, of the uh, what we talked about this afternoon. Uh, France, France, can I just step in here a second? Because uh... I, I think there's we're we're kind of talking past ourselves. I'm not I'm not saying anybody in in in, in particular, but uh, I don't I don't think that Eric understands your your uh, presentation is is calling for an international money system that will alleviate climate change and also alleviate. Uh, the tremendous pressures on people in the developing world, such as the Philippines. He's talking about an international money system that will have a money system in the Philippines, which is exactly what you want, whether it's international or national. So you guys are absolutely on the same page. That's what I understood, and that's why uh, I was concerned, Eric. And, and, and I, I, I hope, you, Nick. you know, some of the... the I don't know if France can hear you real well because I'm hearing you with a lot of static. So he's he is your number one champion here, and Fernanda and Lugo and Go Govert and I are the number two, three, and four in no particular order. So uh, 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 please understand that. And I, I I can't say anything more about the subject, but but we support a money system 
that gives the Philippines a chance to uh, grow and prosper for their people. Well said, Nick.